The bombing has been relentless. Hundreds of people have been killed, thousands hiding in fear of their lives. Tonight, this programme has new testimony from the Nuba Mountains, where Sudanese government forces have been bombarding civilians. At least 70,000 people have fled, days before the country formally splits into two. It's all happening along with what will become the new frontier between North and South. The Sudanese Air Force has bombed parts of the Nuba Mountains in South Kordofan state, including the village of Jura. Nuba people have also come under attack in Kajuli and Jao, just inside southern Sudan. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, visited Pyongyang, where refugees are escaping the fighting. Her report does contain images viewers may find distressing. Their grief is raw and new. Their mourning Maria Ibrahim and her unborn baby, dead just a few hours, killed by a Sudan government bomb, dropped on the town of Kauda in the Nuba Mountains. Every day brings more death and grief. President Omar al-Bashir is punishing the Nuba people for refusing to accept his government. Maria died on June the 22nd. Her body lay under a tree. Since then, many more have been killed. We drove up to the border area to find those who fled to South Sudan, a new country which will get its independence from the north on Saturday. In the village of Panyang, we found a group of men who'd escaped the town of Kadugli, terrified of Sudanese government soldiers. <laughs> These people are creating war. They're entering our houses, killing and shooting us. Really, very many have died. That's why I'm here. Many are hiding in the bush. No one has remained in town. They've come to a place which has scarcely enough to sustain its own people. South Sudan has endured decades of war with the north. The fear is that renewed conflict in the Nuba Mountains will spill over the border. Some of the refugees have walked for days from the heart of the Nuba Mountains, but others have come from just two hours up the road, a place called Jao. It's actually on this side of the border, in South Sudan. But the northern government is bombing it nonetheless. That doesn't augur well for this new nation and relations with its northern neighbour. <laughs> A group of evangelical Christians are letting some refugees stay in their compound in Panyang. Those who've come here are frightened and destitute. First the Antonov just flew overhead, and then it returned and bombed us. Then everyone ran to hide. I could see the plane with my own eyes. After the bombing, I went to see if people were still in their houses, but they had all fled, so I fled too. Three of the dead were children. There was an older person, one of my age, and another around 11 or 12. One was cut in half and his guts were spilling out. Some have injuries. They told me most women and children are hiding in the bush and in caves, surviving off berries and leaves. In the border area, other tribes have also been caught up in the conflict. After eight days in the bush, we came across someone's home. He was a dinka like us, and he gave us these clothes because we had no clothes or shoes. Nuba soldiers are fighting back. After South Sudan's independence, they were meant to join the Northern Army, but they've rebelled. They're seizing government weapons and ammunition in battle and say they want to rule themselves. The Sudanese government says they must be crushed. In Panyang, the refugees are struggling to survive. This is the new Darfur, a cruel conflict in which the Sudanese government shows no mercy as it tries to subdue its own citizens. Lindsay Hilsom, Channel 4 News, Panyang. Lindsay Hilsom there in Sudan.